I've always said the Medicare space is Netflix, it's not the movie theater. The business model is getting clients, obtaining clients, and then keeping them subscribed to your services as a broker. The target audience that you have with Medicare is super, super attractive because they're the most loyal client base you can find. They don't like change. So if you're doing a good job for them, a lot of them are gonna to prefer to stay with you. What we do in the Medicare space, I think it happens probably in insurance in general, but if you sell enough policies, eventually someone will complain about you, whether it's yep. justified or not. The organization sometimes doesn't get talked about as much as it should. Right now we're getting close to AEP. Agents are asking us constantly, they're like, what should I be putting on my AEP letters? What should I say? Why well, don't have to help you write that? Yeah. Love that. Yeah. What would you tell the Medicare agent that's been in the game for a while, they feel like it's getting harder and harder. What would you tell that person to just build their momentum, encourage them and get them excited to go back out there? Uh, oh, I love that question. So here's what I would say. What's up, insurance pros? I have a special guest today, my man, Christian Brindle is with me. Super stoked. I had a really fun experience at the 8% conference in Springfield this year. Um, I was chatting with some folks by my agent CRM booth and I looked over and I was like, is that Christian Brindle? I think I had <laughs> heard somebody mention that you're going to be a speaker there. And I was just like doing this double take, like staring at you very awkwardly for a few seconds, <laughs> like trying to be like, is that him? And then we had the opportunity to go and grab some lunch there. And, and now here we are. Christian, thank you for your time, man. Yeah. Thank you for having me, Alex. And it's funny you say that I did the exact same thing yeah. at 8% with you because obviously you were also there to be, you were also there to speak and you did an amazing job and just crushed oh, it on stage. You, you were one of my, you're definitely one of the ones that I enjoyed the most with all the value you provided. But yeah, I caught myself being like, oh, there's Alex. There's Alex. Yeah. Kind of like <laughs> awkwardly being like, so you were the bit, you were the one that broke the ice between the two of us and walked up and we started having the conversation. So that was great. And then I had a lot of fun getting to hang out with you and your team and your guys. And yeah, it was great. I'm um, excited to be here and excited to be able to do this with you and collaborate. Awesome, man. For, for those of you who don't know you, Christian, can you give like a quick 30 second, here's who I am. Yes, absolutely. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Christian Brindle. I, I'm in the Medicare space primarily. We also dabble in ACA life, but probably 95% of what we do is in Medicare. That's certainly what I'm the most known for. Mm -hmm. I own five insurance-based companies. I own an insurance agency, a lead company, a virtual assistant company, a consulting company, and an event company. And I run the Facebook group and online community seven-figure Medicare agent, which is probably by the time your viewers end up seeing this will be at about 9,000 members. So it's really quickly growing and everything like that. So yeah, I'm an agency builder. And really, I think what I'm the most proud to be known for is I'm somebody that knows a lot about insurance agency building and teaching others how they can more effectively grow a business and not necessarily just grow a book of business. I love it. I love it. You have one of the, you have a great reputation in the business, Christian, but you've been around for a long time. People that when I mentioned, oh yeah, I met Christian. I mean, that dude's so cool. Integrous, trustworthy, a lot of really good adjectives thrown around about what you bring to the insurance space. Let's get right to the nitty gritty, Christian. In the Medicare space, we're seeing a lot of fear in the water. I feel like last year, because I've been in the insurance space for a while now, last year, there was excitement. There's that like a coming, a ton of people were gearing up this year. The feeling that I get is that a lot of people are just scared about AEP. <laughs> what do you think is going on? Yeah, I think it's a, a continuation of what we've seen the last couple of years. And so I will not at all get political with <laughs> your audience or anything like that. <laughs> Medicare being government regulated insurance, the politics of what's going on at the time do relate to what's going on in the Medicare space, right? So this current presidential administration we have come in, most people don't know that the president appoints the head of CMS as mm -hmm. a position. It's a, it's a presidential appointed position, the commissioner of CMS. And usually whoever they appoint, as does most other president appointed positions, they have a lot of the same ideals and philosophies of how things should be done as the president does or the administration does. And so this current administration comes in, 2021, we get a new CMS commissioner. And what we started seeing almost immediately was essentially these yearly, very radical, very extreme 
final rules coming from CMS. And for those of you that don't know that CMS is the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, they govern and essentially regulate all of the entire Medicare space, carriers, agencies, call centers, brokers, et cetera. And so we started seeing these yearly very extreme rules coming down that were making it increasingly difficult for brokers, especially the little guy brokers to do business and to compete. And this year was just more of the same, but I do think this year we saw the final rule that did end up getting passed down being more radical and more extreme than the previous two years. It seems like every year it's been getting a little bit more intense than it was the year before. It's almost like it's a game of how they can one-up what they did the year before. It seems that way. And this final rule that came out, ultimately what it did was it called into question all additional broker compensation. And so additional broker compensation, for those of you, for anybody that's listening that might not be aware, there's a lot of additional broker compensation in the Medicare space. There's Mm. uh, health risk assessment payments on enrollments, post-enrollment. There's marketing dollars, also known as co-op that carriers sometimes provide to help pay for leads and marketing services for agents. There's uh, technically lumped into it, CRMs and quoting Mm. and enrollment softwares that FMOs might provide that's lumped into that. But the, but the biggest thing is overrides. And all of this stuff kind of being put in question and essentially being put on the block in terms of it could be potentially made illegal causes a lot of problems, right? Because the biggest distribution houses, if you will, on the Medicare space are FMOs. And essentially, FMOs were fighting for their life this year in a certain sense. And there were court cases, all kinds of things going on. And I won't bore you with the whole saga of it all, but essentially that's why it's one part of why there's so much fear and uncertainty going into AEP. And in addition to that, there's some other unfinal rule related changes that they've passed that have to do with Medicare prescription drug coverage. And it's causing a lot of market disruption this year. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hearing a lot about carriers changing, dramatically changing what the policies do and do not include. I remember when I first started working with insurance, it was like 10 years ago that I've been in the space. And at the time, one of the things that I kept hearing over and over again is that Medicare was the place to be. If you wanted to sell Medicare and get good renewals and really build something that you could rely on, like I'm getting paid every month, even if I'm on vacation, I'm getting paid, man, it's Medicare. That was the thing, right? And now... I'm wondering, what do you think, Christian? Is Medicare still a great business to get into as an insurance agent? Yeah, I think I think Medicare is an incredible niche to be a part of because when you look at all of the disadvantages of the increased regulation, there's also advantages that come with that as well. And anytime there's more difficulty or more of a barrier to entry to get into something, it means the people that aren't super serious about it and the people that are more pretending and they're just going to bounce over to the next thing, they're not going to stick with it. So it does churn the herd, if you will, lessens the competition. And so like for me as somebody that's a Medicare diehard, that's somebody that my my lifeline is built on the Medicare industry primarily. It's it, everything we do is centered around it. It's in our branding. It's a huge part of our revenue and everything like that. When I see things like this happen, I know that we're able to make adjustments internally and be able to pivot our approaches to make sure that we're compliantly operating and doing business. It's a bit of a pain. Sure it is, right? It is for everybody. But I also look at it from the standpoint that there's enthusiasm because I feel like we have a lot of opportunity to be able to capture market share with less people fighting for that same market share, right? There's less competition going around. So I I think... The, look, the Medicare space to me, I think if somebody has a good process put into place to service mm-hmm. their clients, I've always said the Medicare space is Netflix. It's not the movie theater, right? Okay. So it's the subscription-based model, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's keeping The business model is getting clients, obtaining clients, and then keeping them subscribed to your services as a broker, keeping their policy with you. Whereas if you look at something like final expense or annuities or anything like that, it's more the movie theater. Someone's going to come and see a movie. You hope they'll come back, but there's no guarantee they're going to come back, right? There's no there's no reoccurring business model there. And Medicare still is that Netflix subscription-based style model. And I think the target audience that you have with Medicare is super, super attractive because mm-hmm. they're the most loyal. 
client base you can find. They don't like change. So if you're doing a good job for them, a lot of them are going to prefer to stay with you and they're going to be very loyal to you. It's more difficult to come in now and start from scratch as a single person than ever, 100%. But I feel like once you're established in Medicare, it's very hard for somebody to knock you off your perch. I love that. And that was, you segued perfectly into my next question, Christian. And I agree with you 100% with what you're saying in that as these things start to come out and make it a little bit more difficult, you will see the folks that just aren't committed leave and they'll go and they'll sell another insurance product. They'll get out of the Medicare space because they're like, I'm good at selling. There's a lot of hoops for me to jump through. I'd rather go sell something else. So the Medicare space is becoming more and more open and we're seeing a lot more people become uh, eligible for Medicare. So the opportunity seems to me to be getting bigger and bigger every year. So put yourself in the shoes of a new agent, Christian. You've been in the insurance space for a while. Let's say you're selling life insurance. You've been doing okay at it for the last few years. You're looking at Medicare. How would you guide an agent who wants to also sell Medicare into getting started knowing there are a few more hoops to jump through now than there ever were. Yeah. Yeah. And I love the question on that, Alex. I think it's super important for people to hear. And I think that the best thing I think you can do if you're selling another product and you want to add Medicare to what you're doing, whatever that person's situation might look like, I think is understanding that I think having a good mentor and having good mm -hmm. guidance is more important today than I think it's ever been. Because Medicare is such a, there, there's a right way and a wrong way to do the business. There's a right way to conduct an appointment with a client. There's a right way to get in front of a client, right? There's a compliant way to get in front of a client, right? With all the new rules and regulations. And there's even non-insurance regulations that are making an impact there, right? Like the FCC rules and things like yeah. that. You know, So everybody that's selling Medicare needs to be aware of that. I think, I think linking yourself to somebody that has the, and has a lot of experience and they're doing it on a day-to-day -day basis is more important than ever. I think it's, I might ruffle some feathers by saying this, I don't mean to, but there's a lot of guys in the Medicare space that they built a book of business in the 80s and the 90s and the 2000s. And now all that they do is they, they'll work with agents and teach them the, work, the ways of the business. And that's perfectly fine. But I feel like Having somebody that's running an agency that's actively bringing on clients now that yeah. knows what's working currently, I think is super, super important right now. And, th and there's several guys out there that are doing it in, in a large way. I think we're doing it in a really efficient way. But I think that's that really matters. I, I think mm -hmm. the days of somebody being able to come in and all that they do is they sit on some carrier trainings, they learn about their products and things like that, and they go out there and crush it. That's becoming increasingly hard to do. You really need to know the ins and outs of putting together the pieces of being a real business. And I think that comes through mentorship and learning from somebody who's where you want to be as a new agent. I see agents all the time, like I'll talk to them and they'll and I'll, and you'll have a great conversation with them about where they want to go. It's like, where do you see your career ideally? You're brand new to this. Five years in, eight years in, 10 years in, where do you see yourself? And the picture that they paint is nowhere near what their mentor's picture is. And wow. I think to myself, yeah. I'm like, have you thought this through? I'm mm -hmm. like, because you're learning from somebody who's no, who, who has a totally different outcome than where you want to go. Are they going to be able to help guide you to your end goal here, to your destination? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I think mentorship is super, super important because you need to know how to do things the right way. You need to know how to do things compliantly. And you need to be able to know how to do things that are going to work in our current world. Um, Alex, you know this more than anyone. We're in a tech boom right now. Yeah, we are. Yeah. And <laughs> doing things and trying to keep up with what's working currently, I think is more important now than it has been in a really long time. Yeah, I agree 100% with that. When we talk about systems and processes and the way that the modern agent has to build a book compared to, like you said, the ones that were crushing it in even the 2000s, the biggest difference is that back in the 2000s, even in the 2010s, it was not as much tech built. It was, you could really get away with doing door to door, setting up at a Walmart, things like that. You had people making so much money doing it that way, but that is just no longer the way business is done. So yeah. speaking of technology, Christian, one of the one of the questions I know a lot of people are asking is you 
build agencies. When you sit down with an agency owner, what are the tools that you tell them that they should be using? And then while you're weaving through that, tell us how you are advising people to use AI, specifically in Medicare. Yeah, I love it. I love the question. I think first and foremost, I an agency owner needs to have a really put together CRM, something like agent CRM, like you guys are offering, right? They need something that's a modern all-in-one system that's going to make their lives easier, right? Mm -hmm. They need something that's going to have automation capabilities, right? Because the, the automation of it's going to make their lives easier. There's less manual tasks for them to do, but also it helps keep everything organized. It helps keep their data together. It helps keep their records in order. It makes it to where they can document everything that goes on in their business so they're protecting themselves. And in our space, like I, I ran into a situation the other day with an agent that he sold a policy to a client six months ago, did it over the phone. And the client's a little older, right? The client's mm -hmm. in their mid 70s and the client's having some memory problems. Let's just oh, face no. it, it's the reality of the, the when anytime you're dealing with an older generation of, of individuals, like that's, you're going to get some people that have those challenges. So this person files an allegation with the carrier that they never actually wanted the plan that they enrolled them into and making some pretty, pretty, pretty serious allegations with the carrier. This agent, because they're well documented and they have the call recording, they have all kinds of documentation. It was crazy. They even had a screenshot of the client leaving them a five-star Google review and talking about how pleased they were with the experience. You know, so this kind of stuff makes it super easy if you're getting investigated by a carrier for some frivolous allegation. Yep. And in what we do in the Medicare space, I think it happens probably in insurance in general, but if you sell enough policies, eventually someone will complain about you, whether it's yep. justified or not. And so you need a CRM, you need some kind of system that not only makes your life easier, but you need to keep all your records and your documentation in order, right? You don't need sticky notes. I still see agents all the time with 800 sticky notes all over their desk. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like you, the organization, I think, sometimes doesn't get talked about as much as it should. But I think it's the efficiency of a CRM, the organization, and just being able to house all of it, everything in one one spot. It's, it just also helps you work faster and get things more things done. So that that's a huge one. I, in terms of AI... I think, look, there's so many uses for AI right now. And even if somebody's more intimidated and they're not trying to do some really hardcore AI things in their agency, maybe they're not trying to build out chatbots or anything like that. But even if you're trying to run some ads and you're, you struggle with ad copy, have the AI write your ad copy. Yeah. If I, right now we're getting close to AEP. Agents are asking us constantly. They're like, what should I be putting on my AEP letters? What should I say? Well, I don't have ChatGPT help you write that. Yeah, love that. You know, give you a template when you can go in and make the necessary adjustments. But using those things to just make sure that you have these kind of templates for things like that to where maybe previously you struggled can be helpful, extremely helpful. And there's so many more uses other than that. It's a very simple answer. But yeah. I think even I think people underestimate really the little things that they can do to save you time if you're an insurance agent. Yeah. Yeah. So you're in technology. I know that you are you really keep your ear to the ground, so to speak, on what's happening. What is exciting you, Christian, that is coming out? What are the tools that are coming out? Where you're like, OK, that's cool. I can't wait to actually put that to use. Yeah, I definitely try my best to stay up on what the latest things available are and the different technology tools. I'm not anywhere in Alex's league for everybody watching, <laughs> right? Alex has got a one up on me with, but by a pretty wide margin on that. But I'm seeing some of these AI avatars is so cool. Seeing like some of these AI tools where essentially it can re replicate your voice and it can, it can be an answering service is just unbelievable. Four or five years ago, I, I would have, that would have been like witchcraft to me. I would have been like, <laughs> Like, how does that even work? So like those tools are super exciting. I think we're, it's interesting. I wonder if we're moving into a place and we had a great conversation about this at 8%, Alex. And I know you have a ton of insight on this, but I think we're moving into a place right now where people might, in a shorter period of time than people realize, people might not really need people, a human being to provide customer service for your agency anymore, for your business. Mm -hmm. We might get to a place where, 
you can have that provided completely artificially. And it can be just yeah. as good as having an actual person, if not better. And it's crazy how quickly everything is advancing. And that, that's probably the main thing for me right now. Some of those ones I've seen, like a few years ago, you'd hear them and they sounded super, you could tell. You could yeah, tell yeah, that yeah. it's a little choppy, but you hear some of them now and they're incredible. They're unbelievable. Yeah. I think we're also going to see with that AI stuff, specifically with the older generation, I think you're going to see a lot of people who want to talk to a Medicare agent. And as soon as they think that it might be AI, they go, I don't want to deal with you. I want to deal with a person. I yeah. think the amount of agents that are willing to pick up the phone, I think those are the ones that are going to really see their business grow where they use AI for the tasks that they shouldn't be doing anymore but they're still very accessible on the human level because that's still going to be important. I think even more important as AI becomes more and more prevalent. So yeah, um, I, I, I completely agree with you. I think the senior 65 plus crowd, they long for experiences of what they had, right? Yep. Like, and one thing we hear from clients all the time is if we provide them great service, and I feel we do a really good job internally of our customer service, and it's a big focus of ours, but we hear from them often that they're like, the service you guys provided, you guys provided was great. Someone I called and a human being answered the phone. Mm -hmm. They were actually going out of their way to help me. They went above and beyond. And the thing we hear constantly with that, when we hear that feedback is it's refreshing because it's rare today. Yeah. And I think we'll see that kind of get lumped into those types of conversations to where there's minimal effort. Everything is way, everything is more transactional than relationship based. And I think those that are willing to provide that relationship and show the client they care and really give them a real personal human touch, I think they're going to really thrive. Just like you said, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And then last question about Medicare agents, and then I want to lighten it up a little bit. Speak to the Medicare agent that's listening right now that's feeling discouraged, Christian. What would you tell the Medicare agent that's been in the game for a while? They're seeing the new rules and regulations come out. They feel like it's getting harder and harder. What would you tell that person to just build their, mo build their momentum, encourage them, and get them excited to go back out there? Yeah. Oh, I love that question. So here's what I would say, right? I've been in the Medicare space for 10 years, a little bit over 10 years at this point. I got in when I was 21. And one thing I have seen is the pendulum on compliance goes back and forth, mm -hmm. right? It usually goes real extreme one way. And, and then it might switch shift and it goes real extreme the other way to correct, right? And so like when I came into the business, we had rules, we had regulations, we had 48 hour scope of appointment rules. You could not technically sell Medicare Advantage over the phone. That was a, a no, right? It had to be wow. a face-to-face -face thing when I started. There wasn't even any electronic apps for Medicare Advantage when I started. It wasn't a thing. They had a couple for Medicare supplements, but not for Medicare Advantage. And so that was the world that I came into. Now, I don't think it's it was as extreme as it is now, but the pendulum swings the other way, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and we get a new CMS commissioner around that point in time, around 2016, 2017, they come in, they're anti-regulation. They pull back a lot of these rules. They make it right. okay to sell advantage over the phone. They remove the 48 hour scope of appointment rule. And for about four or five years there, it was the most lenient and easiest market to get into, right? Like the rules that were still in place were barely enforced. I'm not saying that's a good thing necessarily. Mm -hmm. I think extremes on either side are probably not good for the space, but this pendulum swung that way. Now we're getting a correction because CMS has observed that the client experience got so bad for a couple of years there that now they're coming back and overcorrecting it. So it's swinging back the other way. The people right now that are in the space that are persevering, that are finding ways to grow their business, they're finding ways to adapt. What's going to happen is the pendulum is going to swing back the other way. And eventually these rules will loosen up. It's just the natural progression of things in, in I think, a lot of industries and in a lot of spaces. And the people that were in it now that stuck in it, that found ways to do business, they're going to be primed and set up to just absolutely just crush because they have the experience under their belt. 
They were able to grow and build their business in really difficult, compliant times. And once the uh, screws start to loosen a little bit and things start to lighten up, they're going to be so well positioned, I think, to really capture that opportunity. So I think my prediction is, and I, I couldn't tell you exactly how long it will take. I think mm-hmm. the, the upcoming election will have a lot to do with that in, in yeah. terms of how long it will take. But eventually, maybe it's two years, maybe it's three or four years, maybe it's five, six, seven years, the pendulum will swing the other way. The compliance will loosen up a bit. And you'll see a lot of those people, those same types of people that jumped over to ACA or they jumped over to this or they jumped over to that when things started to get hard in Medicare. Now they're starting to come back, but you're years ahead of them at this point. And you have a huge advantage over those people at that point. So there's so many benefits to riding the wave during these types of times because your knowledge, your experience, the progress you've made in your business, they're all going to be there when the compliance starts to wither away. I love it. I love it. Thank you for that, Christian. I know somebody who was listening is, I needed to hear that. I needed to be reminded that in the future, I'm going to be so much farther ahead than the agents who decide to jump in when it gets a little bit easier. Christian, one of the things that me and my wife love to do is go karaoke. And so to lighten things up, man, what is your favorite song that you like to do when you go karaoke? Yeah. Oh my gosh. There's so many to choose from. And to be frank, Alex, I'm a horrible singer, so I'm going to pick one that's least painful to everyone that has to listen. I think my favorite one is, I, I think, any of the classic Guns N' Roses songs. Nice. You know, nice. Paradise Those are hard, City. man. They're hard, I know, but... Paradise City, Sweet Child of Mine, nice. any of the, any of those are 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 terrific. Um, if I come across a song, we we did we did a, actually a karaoke night at, at my conference, not this year's event, but last year's event. We had a karaoke night um, at the welcome party, and it was a huge hit. Everybody loved I it. Love it. And I think I ended up doing like a Backstreet Boys song. That seemed to go nice. over pretty. So that wasn't a bad choice either. (laughs) I love it. I love it. So Christian, you mentioned earlier, if you're wanting to do well in this space, it's going to be really important to find a mentor. So who would you recommend for a mentor? I know you offer services. How can people connect with you? And if they don't want to connect with you, is there anybody else that you would recommend that they talk to? Yeah. First off, I appreciate the question. Thank you for that, Alex. I think that we provide a lot of great services to agents. We are a baby FMO of sorts. We have between five and 600 contracted agents across the country. So we service a lot of agents and provide them with a lot of great tools and resources and trainings. And so I think we do a very good job. We also have courses like Seven Figure Medicare University that's Mm -hmm. You know, mm-hmm. a library of things we use internally to grow our agency. And it's always updated and we do continuous trainings on that. So I, I think we do a really good job. But there are so many awesome, excellent people in the space. People like my friend Galen Hendricks, if anybody knows her, she runs an FMO called Senior Security Benefits. She's in the integrity marketing world. She's terrific. My friend Joanna Wyckoff is a really great mentor. There's plenty of people I could name, but there's a lot of good mentors out there. I think for the agent, the, the best way to find a mentor, I think, is to determine how you want to do business yeah. and to determine how you learn. Because mm-hmm. some people, they, they really benefit by having somebody that's they can sit down with in person or they can go on a ride along with them in person or they can sit in on an appointment in person. And if that's you, maybe you need somebody that's close to you. Maybe you need somebody yeah. that's local and and maybe not. Maybe you want, maybe there's a certain individual you really identify with and you really just grasp onto their philosophy and it speaks to you. Maybe not. Maybe you can learn from that person from afar. I think in our current society, I think there's less of a need to have somebody in person necessarily. There's so many people in life that I've never personally met, but they've made massive impacts on me, but everybody's different in terms of their preferences. But yeah, I think we do a great job, but there's a there's an abundance of great minds and, and mentors and teachers in our space. I love it. One of the things that my business coach told me to do when we first started working together was he was like, Alex, I want you to sit down and I want you to write out what your ideal day looks like. Because once you start to see your ideal day, you're going to have your ideal week. And if mm. you string together a couple of your ideal weeks, you're going to be living your ideal life. But Mm. before I can help you get there, I need to know what your ideal day looks like and how, what time are you going to wake up? What is your morning going to be like? When do you stop work? Like he really had me go 
into the nitty gritty so that he could then capture my vision and then help me get there. So for those of you that are like, I am looking for a mentor, I think the thing that you can do that will not only serve you, but also really set up your mentor for success is to write out what your ideal day looks like. And then that way they can help you get there. Or if they don't align with what that ideal day looks like for whatever reason, or if they don't have a vision for how to get you there, then it'll be a good idea to interview somebody else that says, I see what you're going for and I can help you get there. That's a huge thing that has helped me not only 12 years ago when my business coach gave me that homework, but I still refer back to that. Me and my wife, that's a part of what we do when we're casting our vision for the next year. What do we want our days to look like this year? And that helps us to really set up our ideal life. So I'm going to toss that nugget out there. (laughs) I, I love that. I think that's great. And I think that is such a good message and such a good nugget for people. And I think a great mentor can give you nuggets that 10 years later, you still utilize and you still Mm -hmm. practice every day. And the the compounding effect, I think, of a great mentor can't be understated. It's it's the difference for some people in making it or not making it, that proper guidance. So I think that's huge. Yeah, I love it. Christian, how can people get connected to you? The best way probably, guys, to connect with me is our Facebook group. If you are a Medicare agent or you want to be a Medicare agent or learn more about being a Medicare agent, we have a free online community community. You do not have to do business with my company to be a part of it. It's designed as an open forum, regardless of who your FMO is, who, what company you work with, what your hierarchy is. You're welcome to be in the Facebook group. It's an open forum where people can ask questions and get answers. And it's like a, it's almost like a a safe space where people can ask questions and be able to get very solid, real high quality answers from agents and agency owners all across the country. It's called the seven figure Medicare agent. We are probably by the time this comes out, like I mentioned, we'll probably be at 9,000 members where it's growing very quickly. And yeah, it's incredibly organic. It's a very unique community. Some Facebook groups, you'll get into them and but it'll have a lot of members and a lot of people in there. And there's just not that many posts where you post mm-hmm. something and you see a lot of posts that just don't ever get replied to because the community just isn't all that active. And you don't see that in in a seven figure Medicare agent. It's an, it's highly active, highly high engagement, and it's a real good energy. We try to make sure that it's a positive force for an agent's life and for their business. And we try to make sure that it's not toxic, like some of them can be. So yeah. that's probably the best place. Awesome. Awesome. Christian, thank you so much for the time, man. I really appreciate you. It was so fun to meet you in Springfield, Missouri. I look forward to the you next well. time we can connect in person, man. I'm looking forward to it, Alex. Thanks for all you do. And thanks for your friendship. And yeah, we'll have to do this again soon. Yeah, sounds good.